And welcome everybody to Haunting Live Podcast this week. Thank you so much for being here and being here with us. We are live right now and we do have a very special guest coming on in just a moment. We're going to be talking to a former guest that we had on in the past here on Haunting Live. She is joining us here again for this final episode of our season two. And uh, she's going to be talking to us about what she's been doing lately. So it's going to be great to catch up with her in just a moment. But first of all, thank you guys so much for taking time out of your holiday to be here with us on Haunting Live. We do appreciate that. And if you haven't yet, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube as well as like our videos if you like what you see here today. We are here each and every week. And uh, I heard some people that we follow are not doing some shows this week. But we are still here. We're still here for you, bringing you live content and uh, doing a show on this Boxing Day for 2021. So hope you all had a great weekend, and uh, happy holidays to you all, and thank you for joining us here. But uh, first of all, we do have a very special guest joining us, Catherine Keeping. She is here with us to talk a little bit about what she's been doing lately since last being on our show. Uh, She is into a lot of different things in the paranormal field, including Crossing Spears Over, which is one thing we're going to be talking to her about today, as well as some crystal work. She's a big crystal person, so uh, let's uh, bring her on in today. One second. Hello, Catherine. How are you? Hello, I'm very good. Uh, thank you for being here. I appreciate you taking your time out uh, during the Christmas holidays to uh, join us here on Haunting Life for our final episode this season. Thank you for the opportunity to return. No, it's been wonderful. Yeah, I was just mentioning that we had you on in the past as a past guest and uh, wanted to bring you back on because uh, you're one of the highest rated episodes that we had uh, in our first season. So uh, we want to bring you back just to update our listeners on what you've been up to. So what have you been up to lately? Um, a few different things, uh, including uh, working with the land for healing. So I uh, began doing that um, when COVID started coming across the earth and that wave of fear came across and there was the breaking of all of the ley lines and the song lines across the earth um, and began working with healing of the land and because it felt like such a massive project, started teaching everyone who wanted to learn as did every other healer I knew and was quite surprised when in October, the healing of the ley lines and resetting of where they were in the world completed in October. And then as the next piece of that um, began doing gridding in relation to healing within Canada, healing specific to the spaces where the unmarked graves for the indigenous children have been found and those that have not yet been found. Um, And I did this with crystal grading that I learned and adapted from the work of Vivian Chapra. So there are crystals on the outside of the grid representing everyone who is holding space for this healing. And there are crystals at the center of the grid for all of the spaces across Canada that graves have been found and could be found so that the land can first be healed. And once the land is healed, then the people have a better ability to heal themselves because they're not tapping into a land that is filled only with grief. Uh, right. And uh, for those that may be new to this, um, can you explain quickly just what a crystal grid is? Maybe they don't understand sort of mm-hmm. what that means and what it involves. So um, just sort of briefly explain to our listeners sort of what a crystal grid is consistent of and what it does. So a crystal grid 
uh, can be used towards any purpose. You could be using it for love, for abundance, for healing, for whatever you'd like. It is placing stones with intention, but not just stones, but stones that have somehow agreed to do the work, whether you researched what type of stones were the right type of stones, whether you reached into your bin of stones and these were all the ones that stuck to your hand, whether they lit up when you looked at them, something about them indicated to you that these were the stones to do the work. So to do this particular crystal grid, um, it began with a Fodden crystal. A Fodden crystal is a quartz that has a string or a thread within it, which is why it's called a Fodden. And it was placed at the top as a stone of connection. On the outer ring, naming each person who was a part of this healing process, quartz crystals were placed. And then at the center, each of the locations that had or could potentially have um, unmarked graves were named and placed within. And then energy was used to activate the connection of all of this so that the crystals could be doing the work for those spaces that were both here near where I am in Thunder Bay and in spaces across Canada. Okay, so you did this as intent to help heal all across the provinces, yes. not just in your region yeah. of Thunder Bay. Um, how yes. much energy did you have to put into that in order for it to reach that far out? Like what sort of steps did you have to take besides picking out the crystals? Was there some other sort of meditation or something you had to do to say, okay, I want this to stretch out this far? Um, the intention was uh, in a couple of ways. So it was both in the naming of the people who'd agreed to be a part of it, in the naming of the places, which was what made the connection, in the Fodden crystal, which is a connector crystal, um, and intention went into it uh, partly because of the stones. I had been um, asked by the stones many months ago to uh, begin the process of healing the land through the crystals. And I initially said no. Um, to me, it felt disrespectful to do healing towards land that was not my culture. My, my family immigrated to Canada, they are not from Canada originally. And so to make that choice took listening to the stones over and over and over again, as they gave me the process of how to create this grid of how to make these connections um, and actually reaching the point where a stone fell on my head and, and thinking, I don't want something heavier to fall on my head. It's time to pay attention. Um, to do this, I didn't meditate in advance, but I most definitely grounded myself so that I was centered and present in making this grid as you would with any gridding. So for me, grounding is a process of following the breath, following the inhale and the exhale two to three times until I know that I am present and connected before I do this work of intention. Right. Yeah, you definitely want to listen to the stones, especially if they are kind of throwing themselves at you and hitting yourself in the head, um, saying a strong message there for sure. Um, yeah. And for people that may not know about you directly, you are able to talk to stones. So maybe explain that a little bit and how you were able to actually talk to and hear stones as they speak to you. Yeah. Uh, so I've been I've been working with crystals for a few decades now. And uh, to me, communicating with stones is a very layered thing uh, so that there are times when I hear voices as clearly as I would hear your voice. There are times when I hear um, music and when it becomes discordant, uh, it is the stones asking for your attention. There are times when I see stones that are glowing that would not naturally glow. And I know that this is a stone that is calling out to do the work. Um, and I have been learning about the sense of smell as an intuitive gift that shows up as well when I'm communicating with stones. Uh, so for me, cardamom is a negative smell. And so that always shows up 
uh, when you're picking the wrong stone, going in the wrong direction, and then it shifts to literally anything other than cardamom for me when it's in the right direction. So that hearing the stones is both hearing their voices in words or in song, is seeing the light, is smelling as well. Yeah, it's very interesting um, that you, it's all sort of like a personal experience as well, I think, then from the way you're describing it, that um, you have personal smells, you have personal hearing, so it tells you your own way, sort of like the same way, say you, you use a pendulum or something, it has a crystal on it, but it moves in a certain way that you know it's moving for you. So I think that's sort yes. of the same line, isn't it? Absolutely, and uh, you can do that same pendling work uh, with a wooden uh, pendulum or a metal pendulum to to find what the crystals are asking uh, so that if I wanted to ask a stone something and I don't hear or see or smell information around a stone, I would use my pendulum to find yeses or nos. And before I began that, I would do that same grounding work of the breathing to make sure I was there and fully present. I would check my pendulum for accuracy. Am I running at 50% accurate today? Am I running at 90% accurate? So that then I know what to do. And all you need to do that is to have a chart that runs from zero to 100. And if you don't have a chart, you could use your hand and your pinky finger could be zero, your thumb could be 100, and you run your pendulum and see where does it show up for accuracy so that I know that if I'm saying to the Rose Quartz, do you want to do work of unconditional love today? And my accuracy is 50%, then I'm not gonna be doing really great communication with my crystals and I need to find another way than a pendulum that day. Right, that's good advice too. If you're doing any type of spiritual work with crystals or pendulums, it's good to actually test it before you do that. I do that as well when I do my work. I usually ask it to, any which way to do that before we start doing any type of work, show me yes, show me no right away. So it kind of gets reset. And then I also ask it if it's ready before we start asking any questions at all. And then it'll go like neutral for me and it'll be like, yes, it's ready. So I, I do that for Absolutely. myself as well. Yeah. But that's a good way to do it too. So. And I also um, do that at the beginning because I have a number of different pendulums and from day to day, my aqua aura one and my amber one might show yeses and nos differently. And so it's worth checking to make sure that what I'm reading as a yes is actually a yes. Yes, definitely. It's worth testing it for sure because your energy might be off also the one day that you go to use yeah. that crystal or something and it might not be reading it the same as you used it last time. So, yeah. Yeah. So anyways, um, let's touch back upon your um, crystal grids that you're working on for Indigenous. Yes. Um, how did that turn out? Like, um, how did things go through the process for you? Did it work the way you intended it? Or what was the outcome so far from doing the grid? Um, to be honest, I don't know an outcome yet. Um, it was first uh, placed the morning of the 21st of December, because that's when the stones wanted to do so. And I've gotten feedback from the people who were part of it and connected to it and who will be connected again in the future um, on how they felt the energy, uh, when were they giving and when were they receiving energy from this crystal grid about times when they felt more grounded and more peaceful and times when they felt things shifting around them. Um, but I do not know more yet, only that there's going to be at least one more step in this process. And part of the reason I know that is because when the grid was complete, normally I would clear the stones and set them aside so they're ready for something next. And um, I'm not allowed to put them away yet. So clearly there's more to come. Okay, no, that's perfect. That I didn't realize it was such a recent thing. I thought it was more like a older thing that you started a little while ago, but um, oh, no. it was quite recent apparently. Yeah. yeah, no, I've been asked to do it for quite a while, but 
it it really took a lot of nudges from the universe because I still wanted this to be something that was about respect if I was going to be doing it. And so it took listening over and over again. And what made you, besides the stone falling on your head to say, yes, I'll do it for you. Um, was there any other messages from like spirit guides or any indigenous spirits come to you and communicate with you to say, this is something I'd like to see done or um, did you have any messages? I didn't have my spirit guides show up, but I have had um, in working with uh, different people I know who are Indigenous, I have had their spirit guides giving messages, not just to them, but to me during their healing process, um, uh, which has been interesting because I do know that I have shamanic guides and sometimes they are very present and sometimes they are busy working on whatever is coming next. And during this period of time, it was other people's guides that were coming through, whether we were doing a healing session or whether it was a shamanic journey on their behalf, it was their guides with the messages. All right. Interesting. And just as you were talking there, a uh, little tiny orb just flew right in front of your face across the screen. So I think uh, <laughs> we just had a message there as well. So it's pretty cool. Um, yeah. So they're definitely with us today in spirit as well. Another thing that you've been up to lately you were talking about is you've had a lot of crossing overs that you've had to deal with recently. So I'd like to talk about that as well in connection with spirit, indigenous cleansings that you've been doing um have you had a chance to talk to or help any of those indigenous spirits over or was it just uh regular spirits that you're helping cross over so i haven't uh connected to spirits specific to uh, to those tragedies and yet i have spirits who mm, feel the grief of those tragedies that I have crossed over. Um, those that are local and those that are not, I have found over the past six weeks that I have done more spirit crossings than I have done all year, um, which is unusual. I tend to see more of them in the summertime, but it's been the past six weeks. It has been spirits who have clearly been wandering for a long time, spirits who have been witness to tragedy, who are showing up and they are not showing me a purpose that they decided to stay here for, but instead they are showing me what they have witnessed. And then once they have shown me what they have witnessed, then they are ready to cross over, whether they are crossed over um, with sending them to the light, with bringing in the appropriate guides for them, with bringing in angelic help, with working through sound for them, with creating a portal, it didn't matter what it was. They are coming through as witnesses. And once they have released their story, then they are ready to cross. And many of them have been witnesses uh, to these tragedies in different places in Canada. And what's been interesting to me is that they, they are of all races, they are of all ages. The only thing consistent is that they are witnesses. So it may have been either somebody involved in the situation or maybe a relative of somebody that has passed that was connecting with you? Um. It's that and it's more. It's uh, sometimes it's uh, spirits who have been uh, wandering for some time and happen to bear witness to what is going on in our current timeline. And sometimes it is someone who was there and was in hiding so that they did not get harmed or who heard the story from someone else. Uh, who was a child there, or just any number of, of ways that there is a connection. But what is clear is that 
their stories are true, their stories are honest. And it's even more important that those stories are coming out now and being faced yes. for the first time. So, and that truth is coming out. So that's what's important too. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know down here, uh, Chris and I here at Haunting Life actually recently went down to the location in Brantford. So we checked out and paid our respects to the, the land and the property down there as well. So it was really interesting to feel that energy on the property, but also to walk around the um, cultural museum that they have there too. So we got to actually check out the museum and we did a quick little video from the land there as well that anybody can check out on our YouTube as well. And um, we caught some interesting things just walking around the property there too. So um, what other types of spirit energies have you come in contact with then that you have crossed over recently besides Indigenous? Um, I've had a lot of echoes showing up. Uh, when a person has a significant event, extremely joyful or extremely extremely overwhelming they often leave a piece of themselves behind and that echo can be amplified over time that has shown up more than I would have ever expected um, it, you can often find them down around uh, areas where the war of 1812 crossed borders uh, in Canada and you can find these echoes of people or you can find echoes um, in the places where so soldiers marched before they went off to World War II, and there was this great fear before they went off to war. Um, but these echoes of people are, are not of this. These echoes are pieces of people that they have been missing. They've been missing a, a quite, a, quite literally a piece of their soul, and crossing over these echoes allows souls to come back into completion. And are you able to actually help them then with that? Or are you able to help them find what they're looking for? Or? Um, I have been, um, but I'm also finding it's a little bit of a different process. Uh, their energy feels to me more sticky. Uh, so I often uh, burn a sage, a sweet grass, an incense. Uh, it helps to unstick the energy so that then the echo can be crossed. So you find they're kind of stuck here for a certain reason or another that they're not crossing themselves then? Uh, we can get stuck for a number of reasons. Uh, we can get stuck um, because we had something like dementia or a car accident, something with memory, where when it comes time to cross, we are quite confused. Uh, and we can get stuck because of extreme emotion, that we are worried for someone, that we are in fear, um, that we love someone or some place so dearly that we don't want to leave. And there isn't a realization that once you cross, you can be whole again and visit any time. Um, and so uh, depending on who the spirit is, who the entity is, who the echo is, it changes the reasons why you got stuck. Most people don't get stuck. Is it normally a smooth process then? Say you just pass away of natural causes and then you cross. But say the theory is, of course, that you have a traumatic death, then there's reasons why you stick around, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is that what you're referring to? Is that if you had a traumatic issue before crossing, you'd be kind of stuck here and you're not realizing that you can come back? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it, it takes a, a fair amount of time if you don't realize that you can cross to find someone to help you cross. Uh, what's interesting to me is that there are so very many people in this world who can see spirits and so few who choose to learn how to help that a lot of people who can see spirits are afraid of them rather than feeling compelled to help them. And a lot of people don't know they can help them either. Like a lot of people don't know they have the gift or they have an ability to see spirit or yeah. connect to spirit or if they're having even the ability to see spirit, they might be seeing something and not realizing what it is, but 
they're not connecting on that level that they need to be able to help them with. So um, what would you say to people that have those abilities that don't know what they're doing or don't know what they're seeing? Um, what kind of guidance would you give them? Um, there's a couple ways you can go about learning. Uh, but if you suspect you even might have a gift, it's worth doing a few things. So it's worth learning some basic meditation and grounding exercises, because when you are more present in your own body, you are more able to help others, both physically here and in spirit. And knowing the basics of meditation and grounding will help you. And then she takes some time to learn about the basics of shielding, because you don't want to go out and do the work and then come home with someone still attached to you. Um, so uh, vetiver oil can be placed on the solar plexus. Um, I make a shielding oil with crystals that you can use as a protection. Uh, holy stones or hag stones are really great for protection stones as well around spirit so that you're not bringing anything home with you. Um, you can also work with different colors of light with different smells. You can work with different visual imagery like surrounding yourself with a mirror ball or with crystals. You can work with each of the different elements, earth, air, fire, water, and ether. It's once you know that you can do something, you want to know that you can also protect yourself so you don't bring home anything negative. And beyond that point, you can either find someone who crosses over spirits and do a mentorship with them, or there's a woman named Denise Lynn, and she has written a book uh, that talks you through a lot of this. Yes, we are in times that are changing, so there are there are more techniques, more possibilities, and more varieties of spirit that you're dealing with now, but she gives a good basic foundation. Well, definitely worth checking out, and um, I'm sure our listeners can check that out if they're interested in learning more. And um, But thank you for taking your time out today to be with us, Catherine. I appreciate it very much. It's been wonderful having you back on the show. Uh, before we do let you go here today, is there anything that you'd like to talk about before we let you go? Any projects you've been doing? Anything coming up? Um, so coming up at the end of January, I'll be going to the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show and handpicking uh, crystals, minerals, gemstones, fossils uh, for sale, uh, handpicking for clients to create the next variety of gratitude gem teas, um, and of course for classes to come. So if there's something specific you're looking for, I will be uh, going down to Tucson. I'll be having a sale that is partially online and partially in person mid-February once all the stones are back home in Thunder Bay if you're interested in something shiny. Sounds cool. I think a lot of people will be looking forward to having new crystals. And I know from us talking recently that there are going to be some uh, new mines and stuff hopefully opening up shortly in Northern Ontario region. So I think we can look forward to a lot more crystal content coming uh, to local stores and stuff up there. So, uh, well, thank yes, you very much. quite exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And uh, hopefully there'll be a lot more content for like uh, crystals of variety coming out too. So um, looking forward to that. Uh, well, thank you, Catherine, so much for being here. I uh, appreciate you taking your time out on this uh, holiday weekend to be here on Haunting Life and to talk to you again. And um, like I said at the beginning, uh, Catherine was one of our past guests and it's great to catch up with her today here on Haunting Life. So thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, no problem. Have a great weekend. Happy holidays. <laughs> yep. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. And that was Catherine Keeping. She joined us from Thunder Bay, Ontario. And as I said, she was one of her past guests in the very first season here, Haunting Live. That gained a lot of views and a lot of plays on our podcast app area. So uh, we wanted to bring her back and do an update and to see what she was doing lately. 
And uh, she's been doing a lot of work as she was talking to us today in the indigenous field and helping out those spirits and energies in that area, which is amazing work. So uh, thank you very much for her being here. And thank you to you guys for following us here on Haunting Life Podcast this week. Uh, we are live here on this holiday weekend. I heard a lot of different podcast uh, people were not doing shows this week, but we are here live today. And uh, we had a very special guest on as our final episode for season two. So this has been awesome. We've had a lot of awesome news lately, including being picked up by a U.S. network to end off the year. We are now being found on the Rhode Island Broadcasting Network. If you guys want to check them out on social media, on Facebook, and on YouTube, we'd appreciate that. Uh, they are now uh, airing our Haunting Live podcast on their time slots, and uh, we are very happy to be with them and look forward to a great future with them in the U.S., getting us some different viewers out of their area. So uh, we appreciate that very, very much. And it's a great way to wind out the year. But uh, with that, guys, I won't keep you. Uh, I'll let you get back to your holidays and celebrating and all that. But uh, thank you very much for supporting us here at Haunting Live throughout Season 2. We look forward to Season 3 coming out next year. And we have guests lined up already for you. So look forward to your guest each and every week right here live on Haunting Live Podcast in the paranormal field. Uh, we talk about any kind of topics here. Uh, but don't forget to check out our website as well, which is hauntinglivepodcast.com. We have a lot of great merch up there. You can get crystals, you can get cleansing, you can get pendulums, you can get all different kinds of spiritual items on our merch page on Haunting Live. And we do ship across Canada, so go check that out. That would help support us as well. So don't forget to also like and subscribe if you like the content here today on Haunting Live. Uh, hit, like, hit that like button and also subscribe to our channel. That would help us out a lot. And don't forget to follow us also on the other platforms as well. You can also listen to us on the podcast apps if you miss the live show right here. And um, with that, guys, take care. Don't forget to uh, stay safe out there. Uh, things are getting worse here in our areas, so uh, we hope things get better after the winter and um, things calm down. But uh, do stay safe out there, okay? With that, guys, have a great and safe new year as well. And we'll see you back here for Season 3. Take care, guys. I have been a medium or an intuitive ever since any of my family can remember. When I started talking, it wasn't always to people who were in the room. Well, I started off as revealing like tarot. I've um, moved more over the last four years, um, astrology and spiritualism. In a way, spiritualism goes back to my roots. I suppose my first gift I had, and I thought everybody knew it, I thought this is a really bad one. I always knew when people were not telling the truth. And I thought everybody could do that. It was a bit of a shock afterwards when I found out that actually what I was doing, I was, I was tapping into something else. So when I was a very young kid, I actually used to see some orbs in my room and dark, dark figures, and I, I was very afraid of the dark. It was right when I had like one computer in my house. Um, and I would go on and I'd Google ghosts and like look into it to see, understand them, but I would also get very freaked out. I'm crazy. I don't like it in here. going on around here.